Hello, Brian. Thanks for joining me today. If you can uh, start by just describing at a high level what Inspire is and how it works. Sure. Hi. Thanks for having me. Inspire is, a, is an online community for patients and caregivers to talk about their medical conditions. Um, and it really has two parts. One side is the community that the patients and caregivers use. And the other side is um, access that we provide in a controlled way uh, to pharma companies who would like to conduct research. The, the, the thing about Inspire that is particularly um, special is that the patient support side of it is created in partnership with over 70 nonprofit national patient advocacy organizations. So you could think of Inspire as having uh, more than 70 uh, disease-specific channels, each one of which is created in partnership with one of these national organizations. And when patients sure. join, they're able to join multiple communities, uh, and we can talk more about that in a, in a while. Okay. Now, you founded Inspire back in 2005. You've obviously seen pretty substantive growth since then. Right. What kinds of numbers are we talking about now in terms of patient numbers and disease areas that you cover? Sure. On a monthly basis, we see about 700,000 unique visitors to Inspire and we have 170,000 registered members. We use the word member, but typically those are patients and caregivers and, and some medical professionals. Sure. Um, and the growth is, is rapid and, and, and has been really, really substantial. We grow in, in sort of two ways. One is by adding additional nonprofit patient advocacy organizations. So most recently we added the, the National Psoriasis Foundation, and we're, and we're about to add the the Alzheimer's Foundation. And the other way that we grow is through um, new patients discovering Inspire through search engines. And uh, sure. that has become quite a significant um, um, source of growth. So that's a very impressive audience for what, five, six years of the site being live. Thank you. Thank you. So what inspired you, for want of a better word, to set the site up? What's your background and, and sure. what drove you to developing this project? The, the original inspiration for this was what we uh, um, founded with a, with a few friends, believed was a real um, problem in, for industry, which was recruitment for clinical trials. And you yeah. know, as you know, this has been a problem that, that has existed forever, and we certainly didn't think we had a magic bullet, but we had the idea that if you could organize um, communities of patients by therapeutic area and ask them to raise their hand to volunteer for participation in clinical trials, you could not only find a source of patients uh, who are highly engaged and active, but you could also solve many of the permission problems that existed because patients would be um, volunteering to participate and there would, there would not be a, any of the sort of privacy and permission issues that would exist um, right. using some other methods. So that was the idea, was to accelerate clinical trial recruitment. What we found over time was that it's certainly good for that, but it's good for other things as well. Okay. And how's it worked in terms of getting these existing patient groups involved in the project? Yeah. So what we say to these nonprofits is that if you are a nonprofit organization, Inspire will create or organize and operate the community for free. And in exchange, Inspire owns the patient relationship. So, f so for example, with the Alzheimer's Foundation that we just uh, added and is about to launch, um, there's great benefit to them because we – we take care not just of, of the money involved to run the community, but there's a great deal of expertise required, how to properly moderate the communities with our, with our moderation staff, in addition to the technology and you know, hardware and software and hosting. Um, and what we found is that this is very repeatable. So we, I think the Alzheimer's Foundation was our 72nd um, partner organization, and we've become very, very good at launching these new communities. You know, the first one is extremely difficult. The second one was a little bit easier, and now it's to the point where it's 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 pretty um, it's pretty straightforward for us to do. So right. we try also to be a very good partner, and these organizations uh, we're we're close to, and we do a lot to support them in in many ways. So you must work with organizations spanning so many different disease areas. We really do. Um, Which areas do you see as as the most active in terms of online patient-to-patient -patient communication, and, and which areas are perhaps less well-supported in your view? I think um, 
there are a couple areas of, of extreme engagement. So one of them is oncology. We see a great deal of activity in oncology simply, I believe, because of the intensity of the disease. Um, another area that's very active is rare disease, rare disorders. And I believe that's for a different reason, which is that if you have a very rare disorder, it's often difficult to find someone like you. We, um, we surveyed our, our rare disease community, um, which, which has around 10,000 patients in it, and 22% of the people we surveyed said that uh, the first time in their life they met someone else with their rare disorder was in Inspire, and that's probably my favorite wow. statistic. Um, and then I would say is that other conditions which are chronic but not, um, not fatal in the short term um, probably have a lower level of engagement, um, but there are exceptions to that. For example, psoriasis is an extremely active community, even though um, it, it fits that profile. But, we, but to, your, you know, to answer your question, it's perceptive, because we absolutely do see different behavior patterns in different disease categories. Right, right. And from the patient perspective, what do you think Inspire brings to them above and beyond what they would get from the individual communities? To some extent, I think Inspire is kind of a peaceable kingdom. That is partly our job is to just make sure that rules are not broken and, and stay out of the way. Um, that is, I believe the patients are really bringing the value to, to one another. Um, so, so primarily what they get is support from each other, um, the idea of talking with people who know what it's like. Um, and that, right. that idea of knowing what it's like and immediately being able to talk about something from that context applies to to cancer, to uh, having a premature baby, to osteoporosis, to everything. Yeah, it's a real the, the, shared experience. Yeah, and, and I would add to that one subtlety here is that um, we realized that all of us have interest in multiple medical conditions. Even if you're in perfect health, there are people who are friends or family who have, who have medical conditions important to you. And it's, it's not just about comorbidity. It's about this idea that you could simultaneously be, you know, the sufferer of osteoporosis, the parent of a preemie, and the friend of someone with cancer. And so one thing Inspire we worked a lot on was to let you join these multiple disease communities with a single sign-on, just one login, and to add right. you know, interests over time. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, Inspire obviously also has to have a commercial side. So how right. does that work? There are three things that we sell, broadly speaking. So... Um, one thing we never do is sell databases of patients or sell um, information in that form. Typically, a pharma or biotech or device company comes to Inspire and says, we'd like to access a, a targeted patient population. So that could be um, a cancer patient population or patients with um, another condition. And the three things are, the, the first is clinical trial recruitment. So they'd like to recruit patients for a trial. And the way that wor where that works is we... Uh, send a message to our Inspire members informing them that the trial exists, telling them that if they'd like, they can take a screener. And then if, uh, if they pass the screener, we will make an introduction to the pharma company. So we're sort of in the qualified introduction business there. The second category is what we call insight, which is really learning from um, what patients have to, have to tell us. And this can range from um, um, different kinds of, of surveys to uh, video and to um, understanding the sentiment in the words that they write. And then the third category, finally, is awareness, where pharma or biotech companies sponsor communities, um, um, advertise in either in the website or in the emails that we send out to patients. Okay. And what feedback do you get from the pharma companies or, I guess, the service organizations that make use of these offerings? Uh, it's been wonderful. We've gotten uh, terrific feedback, and I think... Uh, the nature of the feedback is that uh, the, the, the authenticity of the patients is particularly high. That is that, right. uh, and I think that has to do with the reason that members join Inspire. Since the reason that they joined was to, to get support for their own condition, they are, you know, by their very nature, sort of engaged and actively playing a role in their disease. And so yeah. that carries over into the, the projects that we, we do with pharma, the the patients who we invite to participate in those projects are, are typically highly engaged and active. Yeah. Now, something you touched on just before, Brian, is that obviously it, it, it's tricky balancing serving the needs of the patients, That's right. but also maintaining the commercial side of the business. So That's right. how do you protect the patients from I, that commercial I, side? We, you know, we believe that that actually protecting the patients is primal. That's that's absolutely the most important thing thing we do, and we. Um, 
we are absolutely set on not compromising that for the sake of, of commercial projects. There's, there hasn't, you know, really been um, um, issues with this. I think the way to, to protect patients is um, is through through two overriding, you know, sort of principles. The first is that patients should always be in control of whether or not they want to participate in something, and they should be in control sure. of whether or not their data are shared with uh, a commercial client. So we ask patients if they'd like to participate, and unless they explicitly tell us yes, uh, we don't do anything. We don't make an introduction. We don't share anything. Um, and the other, the other thing is that I think we try to be open um, and to uh, never let a patient get misled. So we try to be extremely transparent to tell the patients um, who, you know, who the customer is and what they're doing and to, to let them choose to participate. It, as long as we adhere to those two principles, we find that, that we really don't run, in, run into any problems. Okay. So if we look forward then, obviously an exciting first five or six years for Instria. Sure. Where do you see it going in the next five years? Well, certainly the, the patient community side will continue to grow, and that's something which we're proud of and we want to continue to, to grow. There are a couple of holes <laughs> where we don't have strong communities. For example, we don't have a good um, diabetes community, um, and we're, we're always looking to do that. Until last week, Alzheimer's was one of those areas. Um, so we want to continue to do that. And we also want to be a, a, good, a good provider to pharma. We believe uh, um, we are not at all about, uh, cynical about about the industry and what it can produce. Um, and neither are our patients. When you hear our patients talking about the drugs they take, um, you, can, you can see how grateful people are for therapeutics that work. So I think we, we truly believe that we can do something to improve the quality of medicine and treatment by properly valuing the contributions that patients can, can make by participating. Sure, sure. And just finally, I'm sure it's been I've no doubt a constant learning curve for you in, in developing this project, but sure. is there one thing or a few things that you'd highlight as the key things that you've learned over, over the time that Inspire has been around? Yeah, I might, I might mention two things. One is, one is about industry itself. In the five and a half years that we've been around, we've seen, we've seen a notable qualitative change in the way that industry looks towards user-generated content and social media. In the very beginning, you know, there was a huge amount of education about simply about what it was, and that then led to curiosity and and sort of hesitation. And we've seen much more recently that there was that, that frankly we're meeting with brand managers now who are saying, "We want to do this. Help us understand how to do it appropriately and safely and legally." And um, you know, they're they're pushing us. So that's been a, a change that's that's been absolutely substantial over the past five years. And the other you know, final, final thing that we've noted and, um, is that there's a huge amount of value from, that can be brought from the patients themselves. Um, and I, I'm pleased to see that industry, I think, is now recognizing that, that, um, that the patients themselves can play a huge role in drug development and, to, in, and they're willing to be, you know, to be open and to talk about their experiences. And, and I'm, I'm thrilled that, that drug companies uh, want to listen to what, to what those patients have to say. Fantastic. Well, Brian, thanks very much for your time. It, it certainly sounds like a project that's got fantastic value for both the patients and the industry. Thank you. So uh, I wish you the best of luck with it moving forward. Likewise. Thanks for including us.